I was the uh, first woman in the law firm that I joined in West Palm Beach in 1975, and then the first woman partner. And I was only the second woman appointed to the Supreme Court of Florida and only the second woman Chief Justice. I come from a family of first. Uh, I come from farm worker parents and experienced the farm worker life when I was a child. First to graduate from high school, first to graduate from college, went on to law school, was appointed in 1991 as a county judge and served from 1991 until I retired in uh, 2018. I was the first female uh, to serve on the Commission of Ethics for Palm Beach County, the first female to serve as chair. I was the first female to serve as chair of the Inspector General's Committee for Palm Beach County. I'm the first black woman partner at my law firm and my law firm has been around for over 40 years. I was the first black woman president of the Palm Beach County Bar Association and I was the 95th president of the Palm Beach County Bar. So I'm very proud and honored to have both of those um, accomplishments. I am the first Indian American uh, law partner of my firm, as well as the first Indian American woman partner of my firm. In 1993, I was a trial lawyer. And in the 1970s in particular, uh, Florida courtrooms were an all male, an all white male club where women were often referred to as honey, uh, where the lawyers in my firm I uh, would, for example, take trips to the University of Florida. They were all gators and uh, exclude me. And when I asked why, they said uh, that's because they stopped at uh, topless dancing clubs. Uh, when in 1977, I was pregnant with my son, there were, was absolutely no accommodations for maternity leave. So I went back to work after three weeks. The responsibility of being a decision maker and sitting as a judge was awesome in the sense that it was wonderful being the first. Um, but it was also, okay, how am I going to do this so that I can serve the public and the citizens of Palm Beach County in a manner that people didn't look at me as the first Hispanic. I was just one of the many judges that they dealt with in Palm Beach County. And that was my aim. My aim, and I said this when I, um, at my investiture, I said, you know, I hope that many years from now, I, the fact that I was the first Hispanic is not something that's going to be unique. That glass ceiling, I think in a way, um, I, before I realized what that was, I was breaking that because I didn't know what it was. Ignorance sometimes is bliss, but though I may not have known the words, the term that's now used, it's always there, of always being told in one way or another that you're not good enough, you're not something enough, but I want women to know they are. We, we really are. We have it going on. We have what it takes to do it and to be persistent in doing it. The only thing that beats resistance is persistence. Oftentimes, I look at my unique background as an enhancer to my litigation practice rather than a detractor. And I think we all come from a unique set of experiences that if we use them to our advantage, um, that can make us the best type of professional that we want to be. And in this particular case, uh, I use the fact that I come from a unique cultural background as being Indian American to my advantage because I have a diverse set of experiences that are unique to me as opposed to others that I practice with and practice with in the legal community at large. I try to keep a positive outlook on all of the things that we face as um, women lawyers, especially as a Black woman lawyer. There's an added element to that. Um, I've found that in practice, much like many women, we're underestimated. We are at times underappreciated and um, many times we are not given the same opportunities as men and others are in our practice. And I certainly have faced that myself. I tried to um, put myself in a position to be successful um, by doing several things. 
Uh, one, obviously being prepared for challenges. Number two, being willing to go and put myself out there and take on challenges myself. So where I wasn't given opportunities, I would try to find opportunities and go and get them, you know? And I think many times as women, we are um, not always as eager to go and take on an opportunity and put ourselves out there. I think you have to be willing to do that because um, opportunity is not always gonna come to you. Sometimes you have to go and get it. Don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. Work hard and don't doubt yourself as women are more likely to doubt ourselves. You're as good, if not better, than your male colleagues. Find yourself a mentor who you can talk to frankly. Be involved in this organization. I was a founding member and it's been immensely helpful during my professional life uh, to care and be with other women uh, attorneys and judges, but also take time for your personal life, not only your family, but importantly, yourself. Uh, that took me a long time to learn. Take time for exercise and self-care. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a, uh, a necessity in one way, but it really is for your own emotional and mental health. Foster good relationships, trustworthy relationships with others, especially other women who can listen, who can hear, even if they do something entirely different professionally, that you can just be you and bounce things off so that you don't have to internalize all the stresses and struggles that you're going through. Work hard and have self-confidence. It's one thing just to work hard, but not believe in yourself. And it's a whole other thing to be confident in your abilities and remember that you are no different and no less than anyone else practicing uh, in the field of law. Be patient, be humble, be have an ethical obligation. Remember, there's an ethical obligation that we all have and that we should apply by it. Uh, and, and remember, that's our our mantra. And it's, it's like we should, each one of us should read that oath of, all, of being a lawyer every single day. As a judge, you have a higher obligation, a higher ethical obligation, and we as judges need to remember that. And if anyone out there who's a lawyer who wants to be a judge, you've got to remember that your background and in this day of technology, everything is out there and can come back to affect you in the application process, in the election process, and whatever it is that you want to do, even if it's just um, going from one job to the other. Know that you have to be prepared and more prepared than you think that you need to be prepared, even if you're not called upon. But the confidence in knowing what you know is something internally that makes you feel ready. There will be a time in your career that you will get to, that you will realize that what I'm doing is more than enough. And that's what I try to be mindful of when I'm practicing. And I've found that it has been helpful and successful for me. I'm not a man, I'm not gonna be a man. Um, and, and that's fine. There are things that are unique to us as women and there are things that are unique to, to men. And I am proud to be a woman. I'm proud to be a woman lawyer. I'm proud to be a black woman lawyer. So be yourself, be confident, go get it. Don't wait for opportunity to come and, and you know practice your craft because I think when we know what we're doing and we do an excellent job, that is one of the best ways to break barriers and show people that you know we're not to be underestimated.